deck about art gallery dot com surrealism and surrealism was more than just an artistic movement it was philosophical it was literary it was musical it was political it was theatrical but as an artistic style surrealism basically just captures visual imagery from the subconscious mind to create art without the intention of any sort of logical comprehensibility and yes i got that from wikipedia but surrealist works are known for being bizarre they take the element of surprise they uh, make unexpected juxtapositions non sequiturs and it develops straight out of the dada movements um, of after world war one surrealism advocated the idea that ordinary and uh, kind of depictive expressions these things are vital they're important and this came directly from the fascination among artists with the Freudian analysis of the subconscious Freud was this new sort of superstar of the psychological world right he did a lot of things with free association dream analysis he said that the unconscious um, was kind of where our, our deepest desires were lurking and these artists kind of uh, latched onto that idea they embraced idiosyncrasies um, they believed that the realm of the subconscious was where the true reality was and they tried to depict that on their canvases and they combined different things different elements within the same frame things that normally wouldn't be found together and produced kind of illogical and startling effects and the pioneer of this movement was andre breton and he actually uh, wrote several definitions of surrealism and I'll read them just because I think they're important. He defined it as a sort of a pure psychic automatism by which one proposes to express, either verbally in writing or by any other manner, the real functioning of thought. Dictation of thought in the absence of all control exercised by reason, outside of all aesthetic and moral preoccupation. And then he wrote a second one because apparently the first one wasn't good enough. He said, Surrealism is based on the belief in the superior reality of certain forms of previously neglected associations, in the omnipotence of dream, in the disinterested play of thought. It tends to ruin, once and for all, other psychic mechanisms and to substitute itself for them in solving all the principal problems of life. So it was a new way of depicting reality by putting an emphasis on the subconscious. All right, so now we've looked at some of the variety and uh, the coolness associated with a lot of the different surrealist painters. Have you ever wondered what the big deal about abstract art is? Usually when we view abstract art, we hear things like, my kid could paint that, or why would someone pay that much for that? However, artist Vasily Kandinsky said, of all the arts, abstract painting is the most difficult. It demands that you know how to draw well, that you have a heightened sensitivity for composition and for colors, and that you be a true poet. This last is essential. Why don't so many people get it, and why do artists paint in this style? Before I get into this, it's important to know a little where we are coming from. In Western art history, a painting had to traditionally represent something. There weren't cameras then, so rich people generally wanted something to hang on their wall to show off their status. During the Renaissance, between the 14th and 17th centuries, huge developments were made with highly realistic linear perspectives. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo became big celebrities during this time. Now, let's fast forward to around 1870 in France, to a group of painters who would become known as the Impressionists. The Impressionists wished to capture the impressions of a scene, rather than detailed realism. Some of the big names from this era are Monet and Renoir. At the time, this title wasn't a compliment. The public at first were rather hostile and they weren't really accepted into the art circle until later on. These artists wanted to capture a moment in time and often painted outdoors instead of painting in a studio. They used visible brush strokes and wished to show the changing qualities of light. The colors were also applied side by side with little mixing so that our eyes would optically mix them together. The Impressionists also changed the content for composition. They didn't arrange their subjects to demand the viewer's attention. Instead, they blurred the boundary between subject and background. Think of their painting sort of like a snapshot. And yes, photography was starting to gain in popularity at this time. After the Impressionists came along the post-Impressionists. This is where we get great artists like Lautrec, Cézanne, Gauguin, Seurat, 
in that famous guy with the cut-off ear, Vincent van Gogh. Next, let's jump to the early 20th century to a group of artists who were labeled as animals for their use of strong colors. These guys became known as les fauves. That's French for wild beasts. Naturally, their art was then labeled as fauvism. They had wild brushwork and vivid colors. Their subject matter was more simplified than the Impressionists, with a degree of abstraction. Did I mention one of these artists was Henry Matisse? Okay, we're almost done. Slightly after fauvism came cubism. This was pioneered by Pablo Picasso and George Brock. Cubism became so influential that it also influenced sculpture and music. In cubism, objects appeared broken and then reassembled. Instead of looking at something from one viewpoint, these artists included many viewpoints. Of course, cubism also had its own movements and differing styles. Now, can you see where all this is leading? Everything was a reaction to something prior. These artists started breaking the idea that painting had to represent something. They started breaking the rules of art. The Impressionists' work looked unfinished. The Fauvists didn't use normal colors. And Cubists? Well, they distorted everything. These artists led the way to show that color, line, form, and texture could be the subjects for a painting. This brings us to abstract art. Basically, abstract art doesn't have a recognizable subject. It's another step to the left of what came before it. They are not trying to have their works look like something. Instead, they settled on color and form. It's non-objective or non-representational. Abstract art can be geometric, such as the work of Mondrian, or more fluid, such as Kandinsky or Pollock. We can also go further and include figurative abstractions, which represent things like emotions, sound, or experience. These are big simplifications of reality. No detail or recognizable objects are included. As the Nazis rose to power in the 1930s, several European artists fled Europe to America, particularly New York. This became a hotbed of activity. Abstract art also gave rise to abstract expressionism, which exploded after the war. Abstract expressionism is known for its messiness in extreme applications of paint. These artists invented new dramatic ways to apply paint in an experimental manner. This is where we get great artists like Willem de Kooning and Jackson Pollock. These artists wish to explore inner turmoil, anxiety, and for some, the horrors of the war. During this time, we also had cultural explosions like James Dean, jazz, and beat poets like Allen Ginsberg. Abstract expressionism can also be divided into two categories. Action painting, like the work of Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, Lee Krasner, and Grace Hardigan, Franz Klein, amongst many, many others. And color field painting. This involves artists such as Mark Rothko, Helen Frankenthaler, Jules Olitsky, Kenneth Noland, and so forth. So, still don't know what abstract painting is? Basically, your painting doesn't have to look like anything recognizable. It can simply be made up of shapes, lines, colors, and or textures. So how can we appreciate abstract art? Better yet, how can we understand it? A good piece of work will be able to hold the viewer's attention and generate an emotional response. As a viewer of abstract paintings, ask yourself the following questions. Am I trying to figure out what it looks like or represents rather than allowing something to emerge from what I see in front of me? What are the elements, colors, and textures of the painting? How do these interact with each other? What emotions does the painting evoke? What is the title of the painting and how is this influencing what I see? Have I allowed enough time to make a connection with the painting? Abstraction allows you to be free. It allows you to express your personality. If you're a lively, happy person, get out that big brush and make large gestural strokes with bright colors. If you're nervous or controlled, get rulers, small brushes with less fluid paints. Express your moods or feelings and show them through your choices of color, texture, shape, and quality of line. Relax and have fun.
Deck about art gallery.com.